Welcome and thank you for joining us for this integrative arts lesson. My name is Jordan and I'll be sharing with you how to integrate art into your math classroom. For today's lesson, we'll be using geometry concepts to design a mandala, like this one. We'll be using circumference, area, and parameter in our design. This lesson was developed for sixth grade students, but can be adapted for any grade level. For today's lesson, you'll need the following materials. Different color poster board, scissors, glue sticks, pencils, string, not super stretchy string because we'll be using it for measuring, scratch sheets for recording measurements and doing calculations, and rulers. Step one, your students will need to determine what size they want their circle to be. We recommend students using a diameter no larger than 12 inches and no smaller than six inches, as with the working time, they may struggle with something larger and with something smaller, they may not be able to get as much detail. So we'll let our students choose what size they might want their diameter and they can write that down. And it's important that your students record as they go, otherwise they might forget some of the numbers or it might be difficult to add them up at the end. Perfect. Then you'll want your students to choose the color of poster board they'd like to use as their base. On mine you can see I used green. So you all can go ahead and choose which color you'd like. For step two, students will want to draw their diameter line on their sheet. So we'll do a straight line using our rulers to measure the diameter. Once they've done that, they'll keep their rulers down and they'll want to do a dot where the midpoint is. This dot will help in marking where the diameter line will cross with our original line. They will then line their ruler up with the radius line so that their ruler is perpendicular to the previous line. You should have two lines forming across the middle of your paper. Step three, students will then take this string and they will create a length that is as long as their diameter. So I'll let each student create that length. And what they will do now with the string is take it and tie it around the end of their pencil. And they'll want to leave enough room for the string so that there's only a tiny bit hanging off the end. So this part here, and they'll Position it in the middle of their diameter line, so their radius point. And then they'll move their pencil and connect it to the next line. And this will help them create nearly a perfect circle. Once they've completed their circle, they'll then return to their scratch sheets and using the formulas that you'll provide, including the formula for the area of a circle, a square, a rectangle and a triangle, they'll be able to add up the area of their circle before cutting it out. At this point, they'll record the area of their base circle. And it's important that they record at each step so as to eliminate having to do it all at the end. Step four, students are now ready to cut out their circle. Now students have their bases cut out. We showed our students examples of different mandalas in order to give them an indication of the types of patterns and the way shapes are repeated in traditional mandalas. For step five, students are now ready to start adding shapes to their base. We showed our students mandala examples so they got an idea of how to use repetition and pattern in their mandalas. We gave them the freedom to think about the shapes and organize them as they went all the while recording their shapes on their scratch sheet so they could calculate the formulas as they went. So now students, you can start thinking about the patterns and repetition you want to use in your mandala. Step six, once students have an idea of the shapes that they're going to use and have thought about the size of the shapes, students can now choose the colors they'd like to use and start thinking about measuring their shapes and cutting them out. It might be important as your students are working to maybe walk around and remind them to write down their measurements and to perform their calculations. Another thing to consider is the number of shapes your students are using. While we highly encourage creativity, it's important to remember that this is a five or six day project. We recommend students doing two to three shapes depending on how quickly they work. You can now choose your colors and start measuring and cutting out your shapes. One thing for students to think about is once they've made the first shape in their pattern, they can cut that out and use it as a template to create more of the same kind. Once your students have finished cutting out all their shapes, they can then play around with arranging them and organizing them on their base. 
Step eight, students should have their shapes written down, the measurements, and their areas calculated. They should also have their shapes arranged and organized on the base and be prepared to start gluing. And one thing to note is you'll want your students to use the base side that does not have pencil drawings on it. So I want to turn this one over just so it's a neat surface. Step nine, students have now completed their mandala. They're ready to tally up the total area of all of their shapes in their base. They'll now take the numbers from their scratch sheet and add them together to get the total area. Our students have now completed their project. To display our mandalas, we asked the students to collaborate and decide how they wanted the projects to be displayed together. However, how you display your mandalas and whether or not you do is your choice and based on the needs of your class. Thank you for viewing our lesson, Math Mandalas. Here are a few examples of mandalas that students created. We hope that these lessons inspire you to use art in your classrooms and increase your students' self-expression and engagement with learning. If you would like to download this lesson plan or view other helpful resources, please visit our website, svmoa.org. You won't want to miss our other videos that integrate art into math, science, English, and social studies lessons. This project was made possible by a grant from the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services in Windy and Allen Pesky.